So we're just gonna let these guys finish their breakfast and then we'll get going. All right, we're here with April at Minburn Angus this morning. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi guys, so I'm Lakeland alumni. Uh, I took animal science and my egg biz and I've been working at the college for the last eight years now. Um, I usually help predominantly with the livestock side. Um, animal handling is a big class I work with, which is what we're gonna talk on today with halter breaking cattle. We're getting these cattle ready for shows and sales. Um, half of them have had been a little bit worked with, but not halter broke yet. And three of them have not been touched at all. So you guys are gonna get to see the different stages and how we handle that. Okay, so when I start, I always make sure I have a comb with me. Usually the first session or two, I leave it in my back pocket, but I have it in case I need it. Show stick. Um, I like them a little bit on the longer side for this, opposed to the really short ones, so you can get a little more reach when you're trying to scratch and get them to stop. So these heifers, you can tell they're bunched up here in the corner. So I'm just going to walk up to where I start to see them move. And as soon as they acknowledge I'm there, I'm gonna just going to pause. Let them know I'm all right. And I'm going to take a step back. This is going in and out of their flight zone. So this you can spend probably the first one or two sessions alone on this sometimes, depending on the animal's attitude. So I'm going to come in. Let me get a little bit closer. But sometimes even just stay in the position and turn my back to them. Your body position, the way you face, can increase or decrease pressure. So when I have my back to them, that's the lowest amount of pressure on them. Now, if you wanted to still keep your eye on them but take pressure off, you could do sideways. You can still see what's going on, but the pressure's off. When you talk about predator and prey animals, they are prey animals. We are predators. So when we look at them dead on, that is uh, threatening to them when we are fully facing them. Now I'm gonna come in. They're not gonna like this, but I'm just gonna touch them with the show stick. I usually start with the top line. They'll run away, but I just let them move around. Sometimes I'll stay with them if they're not running too much or getting worked up. There, she stopped. Even though she stopped with her buddies, this is still good. I'm gonna walk away. Give them a minute. I'm gonna come back in and do another heifer. So I might even start with the same heifer just to get her to calm things down. This heifer, she's gonna move around and then leave the show stick on her until she decides to stop. I'm just scratching their back. Yeah. I'm gonna take it away and I'm gonna back off. So now I'm gonna try for this other heifer that hasn't had a show stick on her yet. She's right here on the fence. Another thing, safety reason, safety things to keep in mind. Now because I know these heifers already, I'll I'll push the up where I stand right now. I know this heifer well. She hasn't kicked at me yet, so I'll take the chance and I'll start here. An animal that you're very first starting with, don't do that. They could reach you out to here if you have a big animal. And you're going to take the brunt of that and get the most impression from the kick being fired out. You want to start up at their shoulder, so if they kick out, they can't reach you. Same with their belly. When you come down to their belly, you do not want to be back by their feet because there's a good chance they're going to kick. There, this is great. This is the first time being worked with. 
and she didn't even lift a leg, so I'm going to walk away and let her think about that. And so what I might do, actually, I might leave this quiet heifer in there, and I might just reach over her. Let me see her. There. Because she didn't move, I'm going to take it off. She thought about it, but I beat her to it. I made her think it was my idea to take it off. Now the other one's coming back to play. She's missing out on the fun. This is a great way also to get them used to moving around you in any position, you moving around them, so that they're not as scared when you are moving around them. Go between the legs. Try this heifer again. Now the thing you want to watch, how these three are standing in a line, if I'm not aware of that, and I keep letting her stand this way every single time, you don't make progress. Because you're only getting to scratch her in one spot. So right now, now that she got out and moved, I'm going to go over and I'm going to stay with her until she stops. Getting them to stand on their own is a huge thing because that's their their security is in numbers, right? So as soon as you can get an animal singled out, giving you some trust, that's huge. There. You go, sweetheart. There, that's good. Move them down to her belly. So that was a great example of the seeking yeah. emotion. She was testing Curious. out that stick to see what it was, got a little bit of curiosity going. That's a positive and emotion. Wrong with them touching or licking the stick. It makes them realize they don't have to be afraid of it. So this stage is the most important. this like they're sawing them in half just nice long smooth strokes from one side of the belly to the other the motion is supposed to mimic how their mothers lick them to clean them so
Lisa me and she let me scratch her between the front legs, which is fairly high pressured area for her right now at this point. trying to take that next step and use my calm is I'll just keep shortening my show stick until I'm standing at their shoulder. Right about here I feel fairly confident that if she, even if she kicks she shouldn't be able to get me. I'm just gonna calmly slowly put my hand out here on her shoulder. I might only even do the top line for today. There. Talk about once they're quiet enough getting in their space and being able to comb them in an open pen like this. When you conquer this, you've gained so much trust. So I'm gonna start up at his shoulder. So these guys have only had three little sessions on them. And you can drop your show stick if you don't want to keep doing both. This is what I want to be able to do before I put a halter on. Can you see how I always stay close? I don't get out of, I don't stand way back here. I come right in and stay close to him. So that's if, if he kicks, then all he's gonna do is push her away and she's not gonna get the full force of any kick. He's loving that, look at his nose. So this calf was the most worked up calf when I started working with these guys. And he would not let me cross onto the other side. I'm not gonna make a big deal about that. It was still nice and quiet about it. So now I'll come back and I'll start again. I'll just keep bugging him until he stands there. I might even cheat and scratch his tail head. Yeah. 
you can see I was getting to move more and more around and I just do it in phases. Hey buddy. So the fact that he'll stand here when his buddy just left, I've done something right. You want to do nice smooth strokes too. And when you touch with your comb, you want to just touch and go. You don't want to you don't want to hit them. Not You want to go like this. You want to bring their hair up on their butt and just stay close. walk away from them that's the most that's where you've done something right so now I'm probably gonna take this calf and try and put a halter on him now with the show stick putting your halter on there's a correct way and a wrong way to put it on your bottom piece should be the one that you can adjust so when I pull on this rope it tightens the bottom under the chin and that should come out the left side of the animal and be in your right hand when you're leading. And then if you have to adjust the earpiece, it's on the right side of the halter. See this, what I'm sliding? So then I take my show stick and I hang it on the curve and I'll use my uh, shank to kind of balance. It might take me 10 minutes to get a halter on this calf this morning. And I've done this quite a bit. It all depends. We're gonna come up. I'm going to reach for his far ear. I'm going to walk with him. I might even let him smell it. And I'm going to reach for his far ear. That's all right. Okay, so I'm going to reach for his far ear again. I'm gonna, there, I've got it. I'm gonna pull over his other ear. I might have this a little small. There, pulled it over. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pull this under his chin. Hey buddy. You don't want to make sure you don't pull too tight and pull it off the bottom of their nose. There. So now I've got it on him. I'm not even going to pull on him yet. You can see he's kind of shaking his head. He's not happy about it. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to scratch my show with my show stick. I'm going to go back to what he's comfortable with. I'm going to let him know, hey, nothing's changed. You can still love life. You're getting all your scratches. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to ask him for a step. As soon as he moves his feet, I'm going to release. And I don't have very much pressure on this. I'm letting him pull into it. There, I'm going to release. I just want him to stop there. As soon as he stops and looks at me, I'll release. There. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna ask him to take a step. I'm just gonna hold that constant pressure. See, he stepped towards me. It wasn't pretty, but he, he had that forward motion. The first time is not gonna be pretty usually. 
and he is way bigger than me right now, he could drag me if he wanted to. So I'm not going to pick a fight thinking I'm going to overpower him. There, beautiful. He never shook his head, he took a step. If I can get him to take one more, I'm probably going to call it quits on that. So there, what he just did there is a perfect example of knocking himself off balance. So right now I'm gonna bring his head around so he has to come this way or he'll fall because he doesn't have his neck. There. there. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna scratch him because he's getting a little, a little bit frustrated with me. That's the other thing with these small pens. If he would have tried to go on the dead run or drag me, I would have just stayed with him until his head would have hit a fence, not hit, but touched to be able to stop him. I'm gonna ask him for another step. back in I'm gonna scratch him and ask him for another step okay. yeah. nice <laughs> there even though he backed up he still gave in to the motion try to manhandle him. Now I'm going to ask him, I still have that pressure on the halter, so now I'm going to ask him to take a step forward. There. So what I'm just telling him is no, you can't go over there just because you want to. You have to be facing and paying attention to me. I'm going to ask him for a step.
So basically, I want to find a spot to quit, but I don't want to quit right when he keeps throwing a fit, right when he takes that step. So as soon as he'll take one step and just stand there, I'll take the halter off. So he's learning right now, it doesn't feel so good when he acts like that. So the other thing I can see right here that might be irritating him, this is not loosening right here under his jaw. I'm going to come in, I'm going to comb them. I'm going to ask him for a step. So when they're bracing like this, I'll just wait. Sometimes I'll go maybe a little bit of a tug, but I won't lay into it and put a ton of more pressure because they're pulling into themselves. Moved both front feet and he didn't fight me. I'm gonna grab my show stick. And then I'm gonna get my hand as close to his halter as I can. I'm gonna put my finger underneath the bottom chin strap and take it off and walk away from him. I'm putting the halter on, I'll try and reach for their far ear. Move like this. And then I'll walk this way, make him turn his head. And I'll pull it over the ear, like this. Pull down, make my show stick out. Oops. So if they're that quiet, yeah. 
and then you can just pull up on his ear a little bit. There, and it's on. gonna want to come this way so I'm gonna play his game I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put my halter right behind this ear and I'm gonna step this way just kidding yeah. yeah that's what I wanted Ready? Okay, so if he wants to turn that way, I'll play his game. And I'll come and bring him up here, where I've got more room to get around him on either side. So he has stretched the earpiece a little bit big. So if he'll stay quiet enough, I'm gonna drop my halter, come in and I'll fix it with my hand. Keep scratching him. So this is where your pre-training of scratching and keeping the feet still, this really is paying off now. So what I'll do now that I know I can walk all the way around him, then I'm gonna move this piece across his nose again. This is a common problem I wish he would face. You guys can see now how his nose piece is a little bit too tight. So I can take my show stick and come up underneath and poke him in the eye. And I can pull down a wee bit. Because if I would have held on to it, I would have pulled it off his ears. I'm going to go, I'm going to pull down. There. So if he'll let me come up beside him, I'm fix it. There.
is a little bit ticked right now because it's not fit 100%, but we're gonna fix that. I'm not even gonna pull on it yet. get away with it but it's still a little bit big you want that halfway up the nose because if you have it too much on the bottom you're cutting off their air and it just irritates them just like he was showing us Boy. so you can see on this on the right side of his nose this side I've got it started to come up and now I just need to get that other side up which sometimes if you're lucky enough, if you've adjusted it well enough, you can pull up with your shank and it'll even itself out. I'm not gonna pick a big fight. I just wanna make him stop when he feels the pressure. I'm not even gonna make him pick up or take a step. That's the other thing when you're scratching these animals with the show stick, find out every animal likes different spots. So there's three main spots, four I guess actually, that they like to be scratched. Right on the shoulder, you'll watch this guy start licking his chops hopefully. their tail head. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see he's starting to chew a little bit. Then I'm gonna go to his belly. Brisket. Okay, so I'm going to take the halter off him because I don't want to start a fight with him. 